here in New York City. It's the one they've been talking about. Connecticut and Syracuse in the second semifinal from the Big East Championship. The last two national champions collide with a spot in the final on the line here tonight. <laughs> Maybe it's the cold steel structures engulfing your every step. Or maybe it's a rival watching your every move that builds the pressure here. Fourteen hundred wins. Two decades of going head to head. Think that's pressure? How about a 12 year drought from winning your league's ultimate prize or losing three straight to your nemesis? How about defending your turf, fending off the masses who try and take what you feel is yours? You're going to crumble under the weight, succumb to those blinding lights, yield to those blaring horns, or claim your place among the city's elites. In a town where you can find a blockbuster show on just about every street corner, there's no bigger show tonight in New York City than tonight's second semifinal here at Madison Square Garden. Championship Week presented by 7-Up. We're here at the Big East Championship presented by Aeropostale. It's Syracuse, it's Connecticut, the winner to place West Virginia in the championship game tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern, right here on ESPN. A thrilling two-point win for the Mountaineers over Villanova in the first semifinal. Final tonight. Hi, everybody, and welcome back inside Madison Square Garden. There's a buzz in the building tonight. Dan Shulman and Len Elmore with you. Syracuse and UConn, that pretty much says it all, except Syracuse has lost twice to the Huskies already this season. What do they have to do better to win this game? Well, you know that it's in their heads that they've lost twice. They've got to forget about it, but they need more offensive diversity. Can't be just Warwick and McNamara. Josh Pace, the senior, has a step up, and even the sophomores, just a little bit, if each of them collectively can stop and wind up getting some points on the board, they'll be fine. And historically, Jerry McNamara has not shot the ball well against Connecticut. Six games against them in his career. They've lost five of them, and in each of those five games, Len, Jerry McNamara has really had trouble getting some good looks or hitting those shots against Connecticut. Well, again, Connecticut does a nice job of playing McNamara above the line, the three-point line, and forcing him to go inside that line, and it makes it difficult on him to get shots. Boy, there's great electricity in the building here tonight. I know that Mark Jones would love to take off the jacket and tie, get out there and play some ball, huh, Jonesy? Yeah, just a little bit wish I had Jerry McNamara shooting touch you know McNamara prepared for this game by watching several hours five six hours of videotape with the coaching staff both last night and this afternoon what they want to do for this game is get him some easy buckets most importantly in transition they want McNamara to push the ball up in transition and rely on getting it back that's how he got most of his last night instead of having to get them in the half court where Marcus Williams historically has used his bigger body on him. Back to you guys. All right, Mark, thank you very much. We got a couple of bigger bodies who love to play above the rim, Len, as we check out our star watch. Well, Akeem Warwick, Big East player of the year, on a tear, averaging over 30 points a game the last three games. You see what he did against Rutgers. And Charlie Villanueva, finally fulfilling the potential, came into this tournament averaging 19 points and 10 rebounds over the last six games. Had a remarkable game for a bit of time against Georgetown. Let's check out our starting lineups tonight with these two teams very familiar with one another. The most recent game came just on Saturday when UConn defeated Syracuse by 18 at Gamble Pavilion. Terrence Roberts making his fifth consecutive start for Syracuse. He's given them a spark around the rim scoring and rebounding. Rudy Gay was terrific in Connecticut's quarterfinal win over Georgetown scoring 17 points. He'll be a force to be reckoned with here tonight. And of course tonight's game is available in stunning high definition here on ESPN presented by Phillips. Glad you're along with us here tonight for what's sure to be a terrific semifinal. If it's half as good as the first game was it'll be outstanding. West Virginia by two over Villanova. The Mountaineers advancing to the championship game. They'll play the winner of this one tomorrow night. And you can see Syracuse right away wants to get McNamara involved in the offense. They weren't giving him the point guard duties. That went to Josh Pace. Craig Ford 
can't finish. Josh Pace, the lefty, banks it in. A great start for the Orange. Notice how Warwick, just like last night, Len, tried to dunk the ball the first time he touched the ball, really trying to give he and his teammates in the crowd a real spark. Well, he definitely wants to be able to make a statement, and it gives him confidence as well. Going away, but turns it over in the middle of that zone. McNamara in transition for Syracuse. Well, nice job of UConn getting back in transition, stopping that fast break by jumping the ball handler. Pace using a moving screen, really, by Warwick. Gets the offensive rebound again. See, they force McNamara inside that arc where he's not nearly as effective. A block by Charlie Villanueva right into the hands of Warwick. What action early, fourth the miss, Warwick the miss on the follow and the rebound to Denham Brown. Boy, have we had a couple of intense battles under that rim already. Boy, and you just wish Craig Fourth would take his time. He had a shot, he just rushed it. Rudy Gay has it blocked, Boone misses on the follow. And the intensity is at a fever pitch to begin this game. Connecticut beating Syracuse twice during the regular season. Connecticut's been to six of the last seven championship games in this tournament. Air ball by Denham Brown. He might get another shot. Passed it up. Villanueva ties the game. Good ball movement. And again, Syracuse, although they right now have the advantage on offensive rebounds, they have got to be very careful and make sure they put bodies on people around the rim in that 2-3 zone. All we've got here tonight is the last two national champions. And a couple of coaches, each with more than 700 wins, who might find themselves in the Hall of Fame in the next couple of weeks, both finalists for induction. Warwick, again, just like last night, Len, extremely aggressive and assertive early, trying to get himself going. Jim Calhoun recently went over the 700 win mark. He's won six Big East tournament titles. That ties John Thompson for the most ever. Connecticut and Georgetown have each won six. Jim Beheim has won three Big East tournament titles and has been to the championship game 11 times, the most of any coach, and Syracuse has been there the most of any school. The Big East Player of the Year, Hakeem Warwick, is at the line for Syracuse. He's a senior, had a terrific game against Rutgers and an easy win for Syracuse in the quarterfinals last night. Denham Brown snuck behind the defense. And everybody who plays the Huskies knows, Len, that job number one, don't let them get out on the break. That's right. Make or miss. They're looking to push the ball up and beat the defense down or at least catch him sleeping. McNamara, tough look inside off the hands and foot of Craig Ford back to the Huskies. Denham Brown, by the way, playing with a hyperextended left knee, suffered the quarterfinal win last night over Georgetown, an inadvertent kick, and he's got that left knee with a brace on it right now. Did not do a whole lot of shoot around today, but is in the starting lineup tonight. Boone now in the middle of the zone. Nice catch, exactly where you want it. The pass was a little bit lazy. I'm surprised it got through the hands of the Orange. But an excellent catch by Josh Boone in a crowd and in the same motion laying it up. And Again, that sweet spot right around the dotted line. Jim Beheim's going to try to take away that sweet spot. He's going to bring Daryl Watkins in off the bench. Another turnover, and boy, early looks of frustration on the faces of the Syracuse players. Well, here, attacking the zone. Look at Josh Boone. He's going to wind up right here. Right in here is the sweet spot. You can see that pass come right to him as the defenders are spread. And he just takes it to the basket. Fourth stays back. That middle guy stayed back, so Boone made up the space. That's how you read it. Watkins in for fourth for Syracuse. Villanueva can't handle that bullet pass. And now Connecticut turns it over. McNamara for three. A little bit short. Rebound Denham Brown. Here they come. Rudy Gay's free. Villanueva's the trailer. And we're going offense. Foul on Charlie Villanueva. And to be honest, I think that was Marcus Williams' fault. You know, as a point guard, that's why point guard in this kind of system is so important. He delivered it to Villanueva, but he should have seen Pace set up there. He would have been better off maybe taking it baseline, allow these guys to get position and avoid the charge. And Josh Pace has been characterized as the glue guy, the, the great, the best supporting uh, contributor, the guy who does all the little things. No surprise that it's Pace 
who takes the charge. McNamara rattles home the 15 footer. The Orange back within one. But you notice he shot that shot inside the three point line. UConn will give him that. They will fight hard to not to allow him to shoot beyond the arc. They close out on Brown in a hurry. Marcus Williams is shooting the ball extremely well here in the second half of the season. Rudy Gay for three. And a great block by Watkins on Denham Brown. McNamara again steps inside and draws the foul. So we see what Connecticut's trying to do, and we see how Syracuse and Jerry McNamara specifically are trying to adjust. McNamara's already knocked down one jumper. And it's Connecticut six, Syracuse five early here in this Big East semifinal from a jam packed Madison Square Garden. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2005 Big East Championship, presented by Aero Postal, is brought to you by 7UP. If you want 100% natural lemon and lime flavors, the only way to go is up. And in part by Papa John's Pizza. Order online at papajohns.com. Welcome back to the hustle and bustle of the big city. Dan Schulman, Len Elmore, and Mark Jones with you. And we've talked about how historically Jerry McNamara has not shot well against the Huskies and how important it is for him to have a good game tonight. He does have an early field goal. How did he get it? Well, he, they're putting pressure on him. UConn forcing him inside the arc. Now, that's a good shot for McNamara. He would love to shoot it from beyond the arc. And you take a look once again. Look where the line is. The line is right here. Williams is behind. He wants McNamara inside that line. He doesn't want him to set up beyond the line. And by playing on his back, Jerry McNamara has to go a step beyond that line towards the basket. If you're going to make it, make it a two and not a three. About two thirds of McNamara's field goals historically are threes. And in his career, Syracuse has lost five of the six games to Connecticut. And in those five games, he has not shot well. In the game they won, he shot very well. Now looking for Warwick, spun right into the double team, and that's a big double team. Boone at 6'11", Armstrong at 6'11", and that's Rudy Gay at 6'9", with the block shot. This is some kind of front line that Jim Calhoun can throw out there. Now here's another adjustment, putting big guys on McNamara. Brown had guarded them until he switched off. Now Williams, you got him back. Pace has to get it up off the glass as the shot clock is running down. Gay with the rebound, and the co-Big East Rookie of the Year, along with Georgetown's Jeff Green. Brings it up the floor, now hands it off to Williams, gets it back, and be aware of Gay on the perimeter. A great athlete and a very good shooter as well. Hilton Armstrong the miss, Boone the tap, Boone again, and the rebound to Warren. There are some guys getting up and getting after it around the rim, aren't there? Yeah, you got guys who will really have a nose for offensive rebounding and desire to do it. Josh Boone led the conference in offensive rebound. Bit of a lazy pass there by Josh Pace. And Jim Beheim says that Armstrong knocked that ball out of bounds, pleading his case. Well, we saw the defense on McNamara. Now here's the defense down low on Akeem Ward. Josh Boone will be the guy who's opposite. And you see Rudy Gay has Josh Boone's back in protecting the basket. So Hakeem Ward, he gets it on the block. He's going to see a double. And he's got to have some patience to turn and locate or either back it out and locate and find some open men. It will be Connecticut's ball. And Jim Beheim is not quite sure how when Armstrong was chasing after that ball, how it's staying with Connecticut. Jim Burr saying the ball bounced out of bounds off a Syracuse player before Armstrong touched it. Beheim still not convinced. If Armstrong touched it at all, because I don't think he ever caught up to it. Rashad Anderson is into the game and now for Connecticut, their leading scorer. Here he is shooting from the wing. Did not score in 11 minutes last night in his return to active duty after missing seven games with a staph infection that turned very serious very quickly and left Anderson hospitalized for a couple of weeks and in intensive care for several days. The infection started in his leg and spread quickly led to his kidneys and his lungs. He needed help breathing. He was in a lot of trouble for a while there. It got very scary and they're just glad to see him healthy again. Well and again you talk to him before the game yesterday I had a chance to say welcome back to him and he had a twinkle in his eye. Did I think it's one of those situations once again when you put everything in perspective. First foul on Armstrong McNamara gets loose for a three Syracuse takes the lead. Well Marcus Williams not in the ball game. He's the guy that's so adept at stopping McNamara. 
Antonio Kellogg now playing the point number 20 for Connecticut. Villanueva finds the opening, misses the shot. Look at Gay elevate for the rebound. Somehow finds room as he slithered away from four Syracuse players, but couldn't finish with the left hand. Josh Pace the floater. Oh, what a follow by Daryl Watkins. Well, we told you at the beginning of the telecast, the sophomores have to step up just a little bit. And you're seeing some play now for some guys who, in earlier situations, really gave nothing to the Orange. Kellogg buries a three. Connecticut back within one. This is going to be one terrific ball game, just like the first one was when West Virginia beat Villanova. Just six days ago, Connecticut beat Syracuse by 18 at Gambler Pavilion in a game that was actually tied at halftime. Connecticut trying to defend its Big East championship from a year ago. Hakeem Warren showing some range with his eighth three-pointer of the season. And what did his mama say yesterday when Mark asked him what's the thing that most people don't know about Hakeem? She said he's got a great jump shot. Thanks, saw, Mom. Saw a little evidence of it right there. Watkins got a finger on it. Armstrong throws it out of bounds off Warren. Well, Keem Warren does have range. He just doesn't have the need to take it until now. And you look at the amount of room given to him by Hilton Armstrong, and he makes Armstrong pay. And here's where Kellogg allows McNamara to get away from him. McNamara is so adept at the change of speeds. He'll lull you to sleep. He'll walk and walk suddenly with a quick burst, get to the spot he wants. And the same thing off the bounce. You know, he'll bounce it deliberately, 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 and all of a sudden explodes. Marcus Williams has returned. Daryl Watkins got a finger on that, but a Villanueva in the right place at the right time for the finish. And so far, everybody, whether it's Villanueva, Watkins, Warwick, everybody is playing intense active basketball in this game right now. And going to the change of speeds again, it's not about how quick you are, it's about how well you change speeds, kind of like in baseball. <laughs> That's right. Pitcher. That's right. It's not all about velocity. Louis McCroskey into the game for Syracuse. Ed Nelson on the floor, literally right now, for Connecticut, the former rookie of the year in the ACC at Georgia Tech. Weak side rebound, Warren. Well, he got away with a push off right there. Nelson did an excellent job of blocking him out. It's just that Nelson is so strong, That's even right. with the push off, he never <laughs> moved, so the officials don't call it. 219 pushing 265 didn't have much of an impact. McCroskey in another block shot, this time by Rudy Gay. Connecticut leading the nation in block shots for the fourth consecutive year. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing in this game if you don't come strong, don't come at all. A spot of the Big East Championship game on the line here tonight. Welcome back to the Garden here in New York. Syracuse leading Connecticut by two in the second semifinal here with the Big East Championship. The first one was an absolute thriller. West Virginia leading Villanova most of the way. Late in the game, final few seconds, a tie game. Patrick Beeline misses on the three. Nobody blocks out Mike Ganzi, and then he's fouled right there by Allen Ray with two tenths of a second left. Ganzi made both free throws, and West Virginia wins 78-76 to advance to the championship game of the Big East Tournament for the first time in the Mountaineers' 10-year Big East history. And what a statement West Virginia has made here this week, beating Providence, Boston College, Villanova. They're now, they've now got 21 wins on the season as Pace throws up another shot and it goes in. But that's Josh Pace's game right there. But what about the noise that West Virginia's made here in New York this week, Lynn? Well, it's obviously a surprise to a lot of people, but you know, when you watch them play, and if they're shooting the ball well, the way they play together, the way they move the ball, force you to scramble, and then they identify the opportunity is just incredible. Josh Boone picks up the loose ball and scores, and you talked about it. Everything is being contested around the rim to an incredible extent here tonight. You better bring it strong or get it out of there. That's right. You got a lot of athletes out there with excellent timing, and they're going after shots. You put it in the air. You better make sure you got a high arc, or if you go to the rack, you better make sure you put some muscle behind it. McNamara trying to lose Marcus Williams and get free. Now Hakeem Warwick will draw the foul on Josh Boone. That will be his first. 
The winner of this game between Syracuse and UConn will take on the upstart West Virginia Mountaineers tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern in high definition here on ESPN. It's the championship game of the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal. No team in the Big East history has won four days in a row to win the tournament. Only two teams, UConn once, Pittsburgh once, have even advanced to the championship game having to play four games. West Virginia has already matched that. Back inside the long arc again, and that time a much better job by Marcus Williams in forcing that to an off-balance shot. It is unbelievable once the ball gets up on the rim how guys are going after it. And still down on the floor, we have a Connecticut player. And we're going to see a lot of that because you got high flying bodies and then bodies moving in that paint. When you got guys off their feet, all it takes is a little bit of bump for them to lose their footing coming down. And it's freshman Rudy Gay who landed hard on the floor now is in need of some medical attention. Holding his right knee. And take a look right there. Ball in the air. Gay's right in the middle of his own teammate. He's behind him as well as the orange in front of him. So Rudy Gay is eventually going to come out as Ryan Thompson has already checked in but this is a spectacular young talent in Gay the co Big East rookie of the year as we mentioned and a guy averaging about 12 points better than five rebounds almost two blocks per game six nine can jump out of the gym can shoot it can block shots and obviously a little bit concerned about that right leg and it looks like the right knee right now as he gets a little help getting to his feet. Bends that knee a couple of times, and that's a great sight for Connecticut and their fans that Gay could walk off the floor under his own power. Now, with Gay out, as mentioned, Ryan Thompson comes in, a 6'6 junior from Australia, and a good player, a good shooter, just because of the depth of his team, Lenny doesn't get a chance to play very much. Well, again, he's going to be tested today. I think Rudy Gay looks as though he might be okay as a take a look at him but they're not going to take chances matter of fact he should huddle with Denham Brown what a high arcing shot by Williams misses the three and what a sky high rebound there by Hakeem Warren Denham Brown had a scare yesterday but seems none worse for the wear today so he probably has something good to tell Rudy Gay on how to shake it off got that left knee banged up pace again and pace is becoming the story here tonight his third bucket already and in the regular season even though the orange men lost or the orange rather lost both games to the Huskies he had good games 14 points in one game 12 in the other Rashad Anderson in disbelief that one of his heels was out of bounds when he caught that pass well those are the errors you take a look at Rudy Gay right now those are the errors the unforced errors that the coaches just can't stand. I mean you've got to know where you are on the floor particularly when you're catching the ball and you're not under the basket with the physical aspect of it the first and seven. Well, Williams got beat for that bucket by pace and then missed a long three and that was enough to have him take a seat on the bench as Antonio Kellogg has returned. Midway through the first half Syracuse trying to avenge a couple of regular season defeats. And doing a pretty good job of it so far. Louis McCroskey shooting just 29% from three point range, trying to give Syracuse a second option from the perimeter along with McNamara. Well, Ryan Thompson better recognize that Louis McCroskey can shoot it, but Syracuse getting a lot of contribution from those sophomores. We mentioned it before. McCroskey, no. Thompson nice to save. What a play. And then a foul committed by McNamara. Nice hustle by Thompson. Now here's how you vindicate yourself just by hustling here he is battling amongst the guys underneath and here you recognize on the double team he gets him across a little late you got to recognize McCrossey can shoot the ball and Thompson gave Jim Calhoun a couple of good minutes and Rudy Gay back on the floor as we see great sign for the Huskies that foul by McNamara the first foul committed by anybody wearing an orange jersey here tonight Rashad Anderson has gone out. So it's Villanueva, Gay, Boone, Brown, and Kellogg. Four starters plus Antonio Kellogg in the game right now for Connecticut. Look at Denham Brown trying to move Kellogg, and Kellogg stood his ground and demanded the ball back. Gay at 6'9. He can shoot over that zone, but he missed the three. I'd like to see UConn attack more from the inside. 
Syracuse attacks, but Josh Boone with a block. Kellogg at the other end, and he's fouled by Watkins, who slammed him right into the fans and the cheerleaders down under the basket. Well, it began on the other end with Rudy Gay's fine defense. You take a look at Gay coming from the weak side, makes a clean block. Boone gets the rebound and kicks it out to start that break. And then on the chase, take a look here. Boom. Wow. Talk about right into your living room. Talk about right into our cameraman down there. Looks like he's doing all right. Oh, you better bring your crash helmet. Yeah, that's right. But more importantly, neither team conceding easy baskets. And that tells you this is championship caliber basketball, even though it's in the semifinal. It is being played at an extremely high level. Missed free throws. Now Josh Wright has replaced Jerry McNamara as good a time as any to tell people who haven't seen Syracuse in a while that Billy Edelman is not playing right now for the Orange. He does dress, but he's got some off the court issues. He practices, but he hasn't played in the last four games. So freshman Josh Wright gets the odd minute here and there as Josh Pace scores again. He's got eight. Well, he bears repeating Josh Pace. We talked about guys who need to step up in order to diversify this Syracuse offense, and that's exactly what Pace has done. An impressive beginning to this game for the Orange after getting humbled by Connecticut just six days ago. Syracuse up by nine, and the pressure already starting to mount of the Huskies trying to defend their Big East Tournament Championship. I can't get the special point out of my head. Wow, well, Reese, wild things going on in the nation's capital of the ACC tournament. Uh, how about earlier, North Carolina State beating Wake Forest by 16. The Wolfpack may have played their way into the dance with that win. Also earlier today, North Carolina barely beat Clemson. Clemson led about the first 36 minutes of that game. And also Georgia Tech advancing into the semis with a big win over Virginia Tech. The semifinals on ESPN tomorrow afternoon. Back here in New York tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern. The Big East Championship game, West Virginia, against the winner of this game here tonight. McCroskey and a block by Villanueva, and it'll be Connecticut's basketball. Boy, what a luxury when you pressure a team. Your front guys know they can gamble when you have such excellent shot blockers. You got Boone, you got Villanueva back. Defending, you can go out there and you can gamble a little bit. And on the offensive end, UConn has got to start trying to implode this zone. They're continually taking too many perimeter shots. At least get it inside. Go inside out, that opens it up for some shots. Williams is bumped by Hakeem Warwick. That'll be the first foul on the Big East player of the year. Syracuse already having lost to Connecticut twice this year, trying to avenge those defeats and advance to the championship game. Here at the Big East Championship presented by Aero Postel. We're at Madison Square Garden in New York City as Jerry McNamara checks back in. Five points for McNamara so far. And you know, that's an interesting substitution there, putting Roberts in for Warwick. What it enables them to do now because so many guys are hitting that offensive diversity. He can keep a team work on the bench for a little bit, give him some rest. Boy, you talk about your high low, although Boone doesn't finish. One 6 11 guy to another, and UConn just missed an easy opportunity underneath. That's why you got to come strong. Josh Boone, very capable of dunking that ball. You know, the finger roll is not his style. He is two for eight from the floor. He got a great feed there from Villanueva. McNamara off the screen. Rebound pace who's been the best player on the floor for Syracuse so far tonight now Roberts misses And here come the Huskies on the run Williams has help four on three Open is Anderson for three Anderson just doesn't have the rotation on that ball and he doesn't have his rhythm and then he stepped into McNamara and committed a foul You know, Rashad Anderson in a catch and suit situation is pretty good, but he just didn't have rhythm. And you can see the rotation of the ball kind of knuckle. And here he tries to take the charge and he kind of leans 
to the left, something that McNamara did yesterday and got right. the benefit of the call. And Anderson will go out as Kellogg comes back in. Let's go to Mark Jones. Yeah, talk to Rashad Anderson. He said that he's got all of his weight back except for two pounds. He's at 213. He usually plays at 215. And he said, hey, Mark, wouldn't it be something if I could play well enough to garner some award here at this tournament? I think the bigger story, guys, is that he's simply back. Well, that is true. A very scary health situation that started with what seemed like kind of an innocuous staph infection and eventually put him in the hospital for two weeks. McNamara to the trailer, Roberts, and Rudy Gay with another block. Man. Again, you talk about recovery, you're talking about athleticism and timing all combined in order to block this shot. Think about this, Len. Emeka Okafor is gone, and UConn blocked more shots this year than they did last year, and that's the fourth block tonight for Rudy Gay alone. Well, again, you're talking about a tremendous athlete. Where's Queen Laura? She knows her basketball. Her son's got an outside shot. Gay into traffic, throws up a prayer. Loose ball to the arm. Syracuse with a 12-point lead on Connecticut. McNamara, ill-advised decision right there, and this is going to lead to a dunk. Woo! Is it ever? Now the Husky fans with something to cheer about. You know where he wants that highlight to go. <laughs> I think it's going to get there. First points of the night for Gay. Connecticut down 10. Another block shot by the Huskies. And Akeem Ward not accustomed to having those things sent back. Williams, the kick out to Kellogg for three. And is it going to be Boone over the back or Warwick underneath? I think it's Warwick. Reggie Greenwood with the call that has incensed Jim Beheim as Akeem Warwick has picked up his second foul. Well, Rudy Gay on the breakaway. Got a little mustard on that hot dog. And Jim Beheim doesn't like hot dogs. <laughs> the ball the length of the floor. It will be Connecticut's. Hakeem Warwick with seven points here tonight. But six of the points, Len, have come on threes. He's been unable to rise above the crowd tonight, as you said, because of the incredible length and shot blocking ability of Connecticut. Yet, Syracuse still leads by 10. Williams down low, going away with a triple team, and there's a block for Josh Pace. Well, Warren's having some difficulty down low because there are some guys who live on the same floor. That's right. Up in the penthouse. We got a lot of guys living in the penthouse here. And you have to applaud the incredible effort. And this again speaks to the fact some people say, you know what? Championship week is just kind of a it's just kind of a little hurdle on the way to the NCAA tournament. Look at how hard these kids are playing here tonight. Well, that's the idea. The ball goes on the floor, get down on it. We're talking about guys living in the penthouse. There are a lot of guys in more than willing to get down in the basement in order to make something happen. So Jerry McNamara is going to come out again. And this time, no Josh Wright. McCroskey comes in. So Josh Pace is going to be the closest thing that the Orange have to a point guard right now. This is a lineup that Jim Beheim has rarely used because McNamara plays almost every minute. And at times this year, Edelin has been available. They're going to put some time back on the clock, apparently. There's Edelin, who has yet to make it through an entire season with Syracuse start to finish without some kind of an academic or off the court issue. And he's never developed this year into the factor lend that he was in the past, especially a couple of years ago when he helped to win the national championship. Well, he's a tremendous player for them at that time. Tremendous skill, strength, ability to distribute and score. And he's sorely missed by the Orange. But with a 10 point lead and 415 left, and guys working hard and efficiently, Jim Beheim has the luxury to experiment with this lineup. They're going to slow it down, obviously, and try to melt the clock a little bit while McNamara gets a breather. Krosky doing a lot of handling, looking for some help right now. Villanueva picks him up. Now the double team on Warwick. It'll stay with Syracuse, 11 on the shot clock when we come back. 10-point lead for Syracuse in what's been kind of a street fight at times here tonight in New York City.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2005 Big East Championship, presented by Aeropostal, is brought to you by Mazda, always the soul of a sports car, and Rock Green Light, 83 calories, 2.4 grams of carbs, 100% rock. Well, and it's certainly not for lack of an effort, but points have been hard to come by tonight, especially for, for Connecticut, the highest scoring team in the Big East this year. They've got just 15 points in the first 16 minutes and seven seconds and only two points in the last seven minutes. How are the Orange doing it? Well, again, the zone has given some problems, particularly along the perimeter, and Connecticut essentially went away from their initial strategy to get the ball inside, where Boone and Villanueva had eight points between them very quickly. Hakeem Warwick is finally able to elevate off the missed shot by Pace, nine for Warwick. And believe it or not, his 100th dunk of the season. And it's a 12 point lead for the Orange. The winner tonight advances to tomorrow night's championship game against West Virginia. Villanueva surrounded. Air ball on the jump hook. Daryl Watkins comes up with a rebound. Watkins has been impressive since coming in early in this game to take over for Craig Ford in the middle. And that's another thing the Orange are doing. They're keeping the Yukon Huskies off the offensive glass. Hakeem Warren. Thinking he's Jerry McNamara tonight. He's already got two threes tonight. The first time in his career he's had two threes in a game. Denham Brown can shoot the three, not this time. And it's going to go against UConn. John Cal, I believe, is going to ring up Charlie Villanueva for a foul. No, it's Rudy Gay that he's got. Now, ESPN's coverage of Championship Week, presented by 7 Up, continues tomorrow with the title game. From right here in New York City, it's the Big East Championship, presented by Aeropostal, the number eight seed coming into the Big East Championship, West Virginia. Polished off Villanova in a two point thriller in our first semifinal tonight. They'll play the winner of this game, and the game is also available in high definition. The first time West Virginia's ever been to the Big East Championship game. Just the third time ever that a team that did not get a bye, that had to play in the opening round, has advanced to the championship game. And neither of the previous two won the Big East Championship. Call them Cinderella if you like, but they're headed to the tournament. They've won 21 games, they were ranked earlier in the season. They've beaten a handful of ranked teams themselves and West Virginia figures to be a tough matchup for whichever one of these teams they play although they lost to both of these teams during the regular season. Well it'll certainly be a change of pace. Both of these teams like to get up and down play above the rim and West Virginia forces you to play almost horizontally as they try to work you and work you till they find a mismatch or they get a little penetration and kick out the three point shooter. The foul on Watkins of Syracuse and Charlie Villanueva will go to the line. Midway through the season, Villanueva just took his game to another level. That foul before the shot, so no free throws for Villanueva. Played much more consistently, led the Big East in rebounding in conference games, and in his last seven games, averaging about 18 points and nine rebounds per game. Becoming a star, he was named second team All Big East, as was Josh Boone. Marcus Williams with the ball right now was named third team All Big East. They got some talent. They shot Anderson right into the traffic. Villanueva, he's fouled again. The Syracuse bench wanted a tie up, wanted a held ball. Jim Beheim pointing to Reggie Greenwood. Reggie Greenwood signaled a held ball. John Cow signaled a foul, and I think Cow's call is going to overrule. It's hard to tell right there because of the backboard kind of blocked the action. And that's always a difficult situation when two officials make a different call at the same time. One of them has to prevail. But in a way, the knocks down the first as we go back to Mark Jones. About how he's been playing better. Part of that due in large part because his home situation, his family situation has been solved. His mom suffered some serious injuries, including pelvic injuries and a shattered arm when a truck hit her while she was waiting for a bus. She's undergoing therapy. I spoke to her yesterday. She's doing much better. So that much is off of Charlie's mind. Back to you. All right, Mark. Thank you very much. McCroskey with a fine inside for Warwick. And now Warwick is going to go to the line. I'm not sure we're going to have too many uncontested layups here in this game here tonight. And Jim Calhoun says it's time to discard the jacket. 
And I think one of the reasons is, and right in front of him, they're getting away with a lot of pushing off as Orange try to handle the ball. Now look at the first team All Big East performers. Warwick won Player of the Year, and the way the Big East does it, they always name a Player of the Year and then five more. Jerry McNamara was on the first team as well. No Huskies on the first team, but as we mentioned, two on the second team, one on the third team. And so tough to who's first, who's second, who's third. So much talent in this league. Marcus Williams is leading the country in assists, right. and he's only a third team performer in his own league. And then you have other guards in, in this league. Yeah. I mean, you, you look at Alan Ray in the season he's had, Carl Krause and others. You know, there are some guys that had equal and maybe even better years than Jerry McNamara, but hey, the vote is over. McNamara has been a star in this conference for a long time, so. It's not too much of an argument. Hakeem Warwick has scored Syracuse's last eight points, and he's got a dozen on the night. Connecticut unable to score any easy baskets, unable to get in transition with the exception of the one dunk by Gay. And look at again how active Daryl Watkins has been in the middle of that 2 3 zone. But Charlie also has to meet the pass. Villanueva standing relatively passive. And the group that they have in there right now, especially along the front line, Hilton Armstrong, not really offensive minded, they've got to find a way to implode that zone. Again, watch Villanova getting ready to reach. He doesn't meet the ball. He stands there and allows it to come to him. And then Watkins shoots the gap. You've got to step to that ball and prevent Watkins from separating it. Shot clock at 10. Anderson from the wing knocks it down. Rashad Anderson with his first points did not score last night missed the previous seven games with the infection and we'll see how much of a lift that gives the Huskies. Now that's Rashad Anderson. Oh he just missed the yeah, yeah, opportunity. He thought about it he was thinking about gambling. They get through it. Warwick finds Watkins and the big guy rattles out on him. Roberts underneath has it knocked away. It will stay with Syracuse. Now, unlike the last one, looked like the rotation on this one so much better. The last jump shot he had kind of clanked. This one, a little bit better. You see how it tickles those twine right there. Still has to get his rhythm back, his wind back after being in the hospital for a couple of weeks with that very serious staph infection. It landed him in intensive care for several days. He is their leading scorer, but they've played very well without him the last few weeks, playing probably their best basketball of the season. A lot of his teammates have stepped it up in his absence. And now another foul. Reggie Greenwood with the call. Well, you look and at Hill Armstrong. Hill Armstrong yeah. The Armstrong, the way he and Warwick are balanced the position, that could go either way. Look at the battle right here. Warwick holding on. Armstrong now fights to get in front, and he winds up bumping. Good call by the official, but you know what? If you want to clean that up, you got to get to it earlier. He took that one off the rim. Yeah, and everybody who's wearing orange in this building agrees with you. Anderson feeling it now. Rebound Watkins. Jerry McNamara got an early start in this game. Five points in the first couple of minutes has not scored since, but still Syracuse has maintained a double-digit lead for most of the first half against the defending Big East tournament champions and the defending national champions, the Connecticut Huskies. And a timeout taken by Jim Beheim to set up a shot. Now there's been little doubt in recent years that this league has been one of the best at times the best in college basketball and all you have to do is look at the teams that have been the last one standing the last couple of years and of course two years ago it was Jim Beheim with Carmelo Anthony and then a lot of the same cast of characters who are still here now Warwick for McNamara pace they won the national championship two years ago and then last year of course Connecticut led by Emeka Okafor Ben Gordon Talik Brown they won the national championship and this year Len as you look at these two teams they're both different but are either of these teams if they play at their peak are they contenders to win the national championship this year. Well let's bear in mind that the national championship run is only a six game tournament and both of these teams pretty solid defense a two three zone as innocuous as it might look initially these guys played with passion and it's certainly not passive talking about the orange and then obviously UConn good man to man fast breaking excellent shot blocking and rebounding they have what it takes to go on that six game run. 
A gift for Hakeem Warren. But it takes breaks just like that one. You need breaks to win it all. And Warren's having a big half, 14 points already. Williams actually got a little bit of breathing room. There hasn't been much of that in the first half for the Huskies. And at the end of the first half, Syracuse impressive, leading by 13, the lowest scoring half of the season for Jim Calhoun's Connecticut Huskies. 32-19 Orange. Come on back for the second half, but first let's send it back to the studio for this update again as we rejoin Reese Davis. The caliber of play is rising as the pressure is rising here in the semifinals in New York. UConn held to 19 points in the first half, their lowest scoring half of the regular season, down 13 to Syracuse. Now, keep in mind, Connecticut beat Syracuse not once but twice during the regular season, once as recently as Saturday, and they thumped them, beating them by 18 points. But it's been a different story so far here tonight in a very intense and physical game. Syracuse up 13. Dan Schulman, Len Elmore, glad we're here instead of out there. It's too tough out there. What's Syracuse doing to keep the Huskies down so far? Well, they're turning the tables on them with regard to rebounding. Syracuse out rebounding 33 to 24. And really, it's been a team war, particularly on the offensive end. 14 points. You have the offensive diversity with uh, Josh Pace. And then this is how they're keeping UConn off the glass, doing a nice job of surrounding the boards. Again, the Huskies not even allowed to get their fast break going, only four fast break points. And with a 13-point lead, Hakeem Warwick with two three-point field goals has more than Jerry McNamara. That's Go right. figure that. Look at the offensive rebounds. 17 offensive rebounds and a half of basketball for Syracuse. Keep in mind, Connecticut is the number one rebounding team in the nation. They have the best rebounding margin in the nation, and Syracuse got out-rebounded this year in Big East play, yet the Orange are really getting after it, and a lot of credit has to go to Daryl Watkins, who didn't start the game, but played 17 minutes in the first half and had eight rebounds. Warwick working hard inside and draws the foul. And it's going to be Charlie Villanueva who is called for the foul, his second. An update of our star watch, Hakeem Warwick with a huge first half, 14 points and nine rebounds, six of them at the offensive end. Much lower numbers for Charlie Villanueva. Some of the big numbers for Connecticut. Josh Boone had nine rebounds, but missed a lot of chances around the rim. Len, Rudy Gay had five blocks for the Huskies in the first half. Problem with Charlie Villanueva is that his team has gone away from attacking the two three zone from within so he hasn't gotten an awful lot of looks. He's gotten five shots one off offensive rebounding. Hey, boy sometimes it's just your night. I think Roberts will get credit for it. 16 point lead for Syracuse their largest of the game. And again still got to look inside as Boone goes from side to side in that lane. Got to find a way to get inside just like that. Roberts with the foul from behind on Villanueva. Let's go to Mark Jones. Yeah, guys, you talked about it just a few moments ago. As far as Syracuse is concerned, spoke with some of their coaches at halftime. They say they want to remain active defensively and continue to win the battle on the boards because Jim Beheim reminding them in the locker room that they remember what happened in the first part of the second half in the last meeting when UConn scored on three or four consecutive possessions and went on to win the game. That's a great point, Mark. In the game on Saturday at Gamble Pavilion, and it was tied at 37 at the half and UConn roared out to an early lead in the second half and one going away 88 to 70. Keep in mind Connecticut's won five of the last six games between these two teams and that Syracuse has not won a Big East tournament championship land since 92. Hard to believe with the consistent excellence that they've exhi exhibited under Jim Beheim. They haven't even been to the final since 1998 seven years ago. Roberts, well, he had more room than he thought, more time than he thought, gathered himself and laid it in. That was excellent patience by the Orange in working the ball against that pressure and finding the open man. It's all about the ball movement when you're being pressed. Pressure kind of our theme of the week here in New York, and we're seeing a lot of that here tonight in many different regards here in the semifinals. Denham Brown on the drive. 
Just stood up by Craig Ford, who ties him up, and the ball will go over to Syracuse. In an effort to get the ball inside, though, you cannot pass up open jump shots. Denham Brown, a very good shooter from beyond the arc, shoots about 44%, but he passes up a good one and drives into trouble. And you see Craig Forth with the tie-up. And that's the majority of Fort's value to this team, being a big body in the middle of the zone, taking up space, playing solid defense. A handoff to McNamara, the floater, yes! Seven for McNamara, 19-point lead for the Orange. Connecticut, the highest scoring team in the Big East, at better than 79 points per game. They've got 20 so far here tonight. Fourth with another rebound. And Syracuse just will not give in and allow UConn any extra opportunities. Doing a tremendous job in blocking out and covering that board. Just told a story at halftime that after the loss on Saturday, McNamara walked into the locker room and said, don't worry, guys, we're going to see them again in New York. He was right. Revenge is on the minds of the Orange here tonight. Marcus Williams cut off. Boone from the elbow. Well, that's a good opportunity again to push it, keep that defense in disarray, not allow the 2-3 to set up and find some people. And Josh Boone didn't pass up a good shot for him. Connecticut, an explosive offensive team. They're down 17, but there's 17 minutes to go. And looking at Nelson, really trying to muscle a team war. McNamara's second three of the game. One of the few times he's gotten away from Marcus Williams beyond the arc. The Orange have had to settle for McNamara getting inside the arc, and he's actually made UConn pay there. Ironically, it was Syracuse who came into the Big East Championship not playing their best basketball, having lost five of nine. UConn came in here on a roll. Well, again, on the high screen right here, they force him inside, but the help doesn't come quickly enough, and McNamara with that floater. And right here, another high screen. Boone steps out, but he sees his man slipping, and he doesn't give Williams enough time to recover. Third foul on Terrence Roberts and Rudy Gay to the line for the Huskies. For some of these Connecticut players, and Gay is among them, the first time, obviously, as a freshman, he's played in the Big East Championship, first time he's played here in this building. They did not play in this building this year. Guys like away and Boone have been through this before. But for Rudy Gay, Marcus Williams, who's a sophomore who missed most of last year because of academic issues, this is uh, all part of their education, right, Len? Oh, absolutely. You know, playing on this stage with this kind of pressure, and we know Jim Calhoun really treasures Big East Tournament Championships, so he wants to win this in the worst way. Looking for his seventh. Jim Beheim looking for his fourth. McNamara turns it over. Williams one on two. And he's fouled by Louis McCroskey. Well, in this kind of situation, that's not a bad foul. Advantage break situation for UConn. McCroskey takes a gamble and gets called for the foul, but he prevents the fast break. Take a look right there. There's the reach and the foul. He gets a little bit of an elbow upside the head of Marcus Williams. Almost an errant pass there by Williams, who the last couple of days has just not been as efficient, not been as effective as he had been in the second half of the regular season, where he was just piling up the assists at a ridiculous rate. Villanueva with a great tip off the Williams miss. And that's what UConn's going to have to do. Their guys, backline guys, are going to have to recognize when shots go up, and they're going to have to fight for position. Right now, the real estate under the basket on both ends belongs to Syracuse. Pace rifles one into fourth, and it's blocked. Again, look at Nelson really muscling Ward. Haven't heard from Akeem much in the last several sequences, and Nelson doing a nice job of bodying up. A miss by Pace. Look out as Nelson and Warwick and Villanueva all crash to the floor, and Villanueva appears to have gotten the worst of it. A dangerous looking play as three guys got up high and Villanueva came down hard and he is still down 
face down on the floor right now after a scary fall here at the Garden. Charlie Villanueva is up and okay after that scary collision with the floor when he got tangled up with Warwick and Nelson moments ago. And you could see in the aftermath from the live shot of when Villanueva came back out on the floor as he was holding his jaw. He hit face first, among other things. Down on the floor, but he's okay. A foul was called on Connecticut's Ed Nelson on that play. Now it's Boone defending Warwick. Warwick's had about four different guys on him at various points of this game. Nice switch there by Villanueva to try to stop Warwick's momentum to the basket. Much better adjustment defensively, stepping out on McNamara and covering up down low. Villanueva can't get the shot off. Watkins stands him up. Pace with the turnover. Warwick at the other end with those long strides and that long reach to lay it in, and he's got 17. And again, the orange look like the Huskies normally look. Turnover, fast break, hitting the glass, limiting the opponent to one shot and out. Meanwhile, Connecticut's having to play a lot of half-court offense here. They're not getting a lot of fast breaks, and it's really taken them out of their, out of their rhythm. Right, easy opportunities and second-chance opportunities is what the Huskies rely on, and they're getting very few today. Anderson has that shot deflected. Take a look at the defense right here. Again, Villanueva gets stopped, and then there's the strip right there, and that turns into a fast-break situation. Warwick does a nice job of protecting the ball against Williams' strip attempt. Back to the action. Anderson misses a three. Pace comes down with a rebound for Syracuse. Here's the handoff to McNamara. And Williams right on on him. Jerry McNamara does have a couple of threes. Ten points in this game. Syracuse dominating off turnovers. Usually it's Connecticut who gets off to the races and dominates in that category. Josh Pace with two more. How does he do it? He's got ten. Well, that time he fooled Rashad Anderson. He went right, which he normally does not do. And Anderson totally confused. Villanueva staying with it. You got to give Charlie Villanueva credit. A guy who at times, Len, has been criticized intermittently for maybe a lack of aggressiveness or passion or killer instinct. He's getting after it here tonight. Well, I tell you what, he's growing up. He's growing up in a college system where the coaches have more impact than on the pro level and you got more practice time more opportunity to work on your game and in the overall scheme of things more opportunity to mature as a person in a university community that's the value the foul is going to go against Warwick away from the ball that'll be his third and Jim Beheim in the face of Reggie Greenwood the official who made the call I think the officials are giving both coaches here a lot of leeway tonight because they've both been on them hard for the moment this game began and that's natural in a game as physical as this. Well this is a rough game for the officials because there's nothing but bumping. You see there a bump here bump there. There's one from Villanueva. Well, there's another one. Yeah he did it. He did. He did the shoulder into Rudy Gay there. You know guys are just banging in there and the officials are using excellent discretion. They're maintaining control of this game but still allowing these guys to play. Great anticipation by Watkins, who has been a major force for Syracuse tonight. McCloskey, a wide open three, rebound Connecticut. And with this lead, that's not a bad shot for Louis McCloskey. Anderson has it taken away by McNamara. Look out! Here's Hakeem! And the route is on right now here at Madison Square Garden. Syracuse less than a week off an 18 point loss to the Huskies leads by 21. Boone inside fouled before the shots. Expecting a little fireworks after the steal right here. And look at Warwick ahead of everyone. But he was just a little bit too close to the rim to be able to do his trademark extension. But again, just enough to get this crowd into it and to get his teammates into it. And Ward runs back exhorting everybody he wants more. Now, though, he's got to go out. That last foul was on him, Lennon. It's his fourth, so he's going to have to sit down for a while. 
Rudy Gay looking Warwick-like as he scores. What a big-time move by Rudy Gay on the jump stop. You know, maybe that will awaken Rudy Gay, allow him to be more aggressive offensively. Somebody for UConn has to step up and start taking over on the offensive end. Well, you get the feeling a team as talented as they are that they do have a run in them, and maybe it'll happen with Warwick on the bench, but they've got a lot of ground here to make up down by 19. Another good defensive sequence. Problem with UConn, though, is they can't string enough of those together. Force McNamara inside the three, got the rebound off an off-balance shot. Williams tries to penetrate. Wasn't anticipating the pass. Denham Brown wasn't. And they throw it out of bounds. A key more sideline with a foul trouble right now. But boy, has he been a big force in this game here tonight for the Orange. Idris, thank you. Reese's Crimson Tide looking like a pretty serious contender for the SEC championship. Look at what Syracuse is doing to Connecticut here tonight. And the winner of this game is going to take on the West Virginia Mountaineers in the Big East Championship game tomorrow night. Presented by Aero Postal. Call them Cinderella if you want. They're the number eight seed coming into the Big East tournament. Beat Providence on day one. Beat Boston College in the quarters. Beat Villanova in a thriller, winning by two in the semis earlier tonight. And the Mountaineers have made a huge statement here in their three days in New York. They've locked up without question a spot in the NCAA tournament. They're in the Big East Championship game for the first time in their 10 year history in this league. And they will play the winner of this game. And unless Connecticut figures out a way to score some points in a hurry, it's going to be the Orange. I'll tell you what, though, with West Virginia, this city known for overcoming the odds, they will have to be the first team to win a championship playing four nights. Yep. And that fourth night is going to have some impact. Although, when you look at West Virginia's style, you know, they don't exactly burn up and down the floor, so they don't expend nearly as much energy, say, as a team like UConn and others in going end line to end line. Not to say they don't work hard. Williams able to penetrate. There haven't been many open looks from the inside for Connecticut. First two points of the night for Williams, and the Huskies have it down to 17. It was as high as 21 minutes ago. But their style might save legs, talking about the Mountaineers. Somehow that ball goes in for Terrence Roberts. You know, when you got young players, so much of this game is about emotion right now. When things are going well for you, you're going to go hard. That was definitely a foul. Got him on the elbow. Third foul on Josh Boone. Syracuse trying to squeeze as many minutes as they can out of the likes of Roberts. And Watkins and so forth because Hakeem Warwick is sitting down with four fouls. But you know, with this kind of lead, that's a good thing. They're in for a tough game tomorrow night with West Virginia should that situation arise and they can rest Hakeem Warwick. Not the way you want to rest them, but they can rest them. Beautifully executed there. The bounce pass from Boone to Armstrong as Connecticut solves the zone on that trip. But they don't do it enough. They settle for the jumper too much. They dribble in the trouble too much. Again, a young team trying to understand what it is they need to do. Another bucket for Terrence Roberts. And they don't block out the Huskies. I mean, I know Jim Calhoun, who's a stickler for fundamental inside play, is going to be disgusted by this film when he takes a look at it after the game. Out of bounds to the Orange, especially when his team has been the number one rebounding team in the country this year. Well, they're getting manhandled tonight by a team not known for its ability to rebound in Syracuse. But the Orange, they've been getting after it from the moment this game began. And guys like Roberts and Watkins, the sophomores, they have really been the driving force. Take a look at the offensive rebounds and the points. Very efficient conversion by Syracuse and as I said they've turned the tables on UConn because normally UConn's got the higher number. McNamara goes right by Williams. Well, Roberts and Watkins up around the rim again. This time it won't stay down but an unbelievable effort on the offensive glass all night long by Syracuse. And how about McNamara. He's trying to perfect that little floater in the lane recognizing that everybody now is forcing him inside the three point line so he might as well take advantage of it.
Ed Nelson has checked back in for Hilton Armstrong for Connecticut. Nine minutes to go and a big 19 point lead for Syracuse. Connecticut beating the Orange twice during the regular season. You know, Jim Calhoun just searching for somebody, anybody to put a body on an orange shirt. Ed Nelson, the only guy really willing, it seems, to get down low and to make contact. Rebound Denham Brown off the miss from Josh Pace. Williams off to Boone. And a block from behind. Boone asking for a foul. Jim Calhoun begging for a foul. Well, when you go to the basket this strong as Boone does, you got to get rewarded and absolutely should have gotten a foul. Now Josh Boone got his reward right there with a dunk, and it's 52-35. Slammed it home off the inbounds. Well, UConn again, a little three-quarter court pressure, trying anything to disrupt Syracuse. Take some time off the clock, make them take a bad shot. And they force the turnover. 8-12 to go, second half, second semifinal here at the Big East Championship. Presented by Aero Postal, along with Len Elmore and Mark Jones. I'm Dan Schulman. We're here at Sold Out Madison Square Garden in New York City. Heavyweight battle between the Huskies and Orange with the winner to take on West Virginia in the championship game tomorrow night after the Mountaineers knocked off Villanova earlier tonight. Well, good hands there by Pace. The arrow will keep it at this end of the floor. Under eight to go. Time running out, but the pressure building on the Huskies to try to retain their crown. Thank you, Syracuse trying to move into the championship game here in the Big East. And with a comfortable lead right now, 52-36 over UConn. Rudy Gay just knocked down the first free throw. Along with Len Elmore, Mark Jones, I'm Dan Schulman. The Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal. While you were watching the conclusion to the Pacific game, Connecticut came up with a steal. Marcus Williams tapped it ahead to Rudy Gay, who was going to go up and dunk it, and dunk it hard. And Terrence Roberts got back and fouled him, if nothing else. You know, when a, you get a big dunk, it gets your, your team up, it gets your fans up, it gets the adrenaline going. I thought it was a great foul by Roberts, even though Gay knocked down the free throws. That's right. At this point in time, nothing easy for UConn. Nothing that will raise their emotions or get them back into this ball game emotionally. Roberts and Watkins, the two sophomore big guys, have been major impact performers for Jim Beheim here tonight. Another steal. Marcus Williams being chased by McCroskey who can't catch him and what was once a 21 point lead is now down to 13 here comes the pressure. Okay, now Watkins almost and he knew what he was doing he turned his feet to make sure his toes didn't go across the line very close. Ryan Thompson now with a game for Connecticut defending pace and bumps him foul on Thompson. Again, very active right now and taking the ball out of McNamara's hands and forcing someone else to handle it. 
UConn's got to start gambling a little bit. And on that play, the foul called on Thompson. Obviously, Jim Calhoun not happy with it. Trying to get back in a ball game, you expect to be a little physical. As physical as this game is among the big men, he thought that that was uh, kind of out of place. Be interesting to see when Jim Beheim decides to put Hakeem Warwick back into the game. He's got four fouls. He's been out about five minutes. McNamara, a deep, deep three. What a scramble. What a battle. And Ed Nelson came up with a basketball and called a timeout. So Connecticut slowly but surely trying to creep back into it. Down 13, under six minutes to go with the Garden. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2005 Big East Championship, presented by Aero Postal, is brought to you by 7-Up. If you want 100% natural lemon and lime flavors, the only way to go is up. And in part by Cialis. Cialis is here. Ask your doctor if a free sample of Cialis is right for you. Audrey Sankey, 5.35 to go here in New York and a 13-point lead for Syracuse as Josh Boone is fouled. Let's take a look now at our Nike game track here tonight in a spirited semifinal game between the Orange and the Huskies. And Syracuse, maybe the dominant story of the game, Len, is their incredible ability to get offensive rebounds against what is supposed to be the best rebounding team in the nation. And I haven't seen them any tougher than they are tonight in holding on to the real estate down there, being able to go up and really attack the rim for the rebounds as you see a team Warwick back in the ball game. I think Jim Calhoun recognized. I mean, uh, Jim Beheim recognizes he doesn't want this thing to slip away with some miles out of his big man. So Warwick back in with four fouls. Syracuse at one point led by 21. It's down to 12. And the pressure continues from the Huskies, and this has been successful for them. And a timeout Syracuse called by the Orange. Unable to advance the ball. ESPN's coverage of Championship Week presented by 7-Up continues tomorrow with the title game from right here in New York City. It's the Big East Championship presented by Aeropostale. The winner of this game will take on John B. Lines, West Virginia Mountaineers, who won a thriller, a two-point win over Villanova in the first semifinal tonight. The Big East Championship is also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Perhaps no team in America has done more for their cause than West Virginia has done this week. Winning three games already, beating Providence, Boston College, Villanova, and some talented, tough, intelligent players running a very nice system, a very well-coached team. And a West Virginia team that's very confident right now. They've won nine of their last 11. Well, they are the blueprint for bubble teams. Just win. That's all you got to do. You put the doubt as the rest if you continue to win. Yeah, they're off the bubble right now. They're in right now. Up to 21 wins. Warwick, tough shot. That was a big shot. Kind of stem this momentum shift just a little bit. Hakeem Warwick right now has 140 points in his last five games, 28 points per game. And he's playing with tremendous confidence. That's why he's put back in the ball game. But now it seems as though UConn more willing now to try to beat the gaps off the dribble, off the pass. I think the press really has energized them a little bit. The activity got them excited. Syracuse breaks at this time, and now they're going to run a little bit of clock. Up 12, four and a half to go. Villanueva out on McCroskey, 35 feet from the bucket. McCroskey hands it off to Pace, and a nice play from behind by Kellogg to knock it out of bounds. Well, Jim Beheim obviously needed some scoring from down low, and his work working on the best shot blocker in the Big East. And he does a nice job there extending just making enough of a move and he gets the ball up there before Boone can elevate to his maximum. McNamara. 
Well, Rocky's got a way with a push off there. And almost came down with a rebound. He did as it eventually deflects into the hands of McNamara. And now Syracuse will run some more time off the clock. There's a block on Marcus Williams. UConn not over the limit yet. Second on Williams, fifth on the team. And Jim Calhoun, I think, is thinking what you just said about Watkins pushing off. He's frustrated, but I mean, he's more frustrated with his team. And I think, you know, when it's time to turn it off at the end of this game, he'll realize the, the physical aspect of this game has made it a very difficult game to officiate. Yeah. These guys are going to make some mistakes. Yeah. Human, but overall, they've done a nice job. You know, what's interesting is even though Connecticut beat Syracuse on Saturday, Syracuse had 22 offensive rebounds, a huge total. They've already got 26 here tonight. Pace. Make it 27. Watkins and a block by Boone. McNamara has it. And it's going to be out of bounds off into Connecticut. You cannot fault the effort of anybody involved in this game here tonight. The Orange less than four minutes away from a trip to the final. Reese, thank you very much. We know you will, and we'll keep you posted on what's going on here in the final 341 semifinal action for the Big East Championship presented by Aeropostal in Connecticut, a team with the best rebounding margin in America this season, getting dominated on the glass, especially on the offensive glass by Syracuse. Whether it's Warwick or Roberts or Watkins, it's been a team effort, and it's the biggest reason why the Orange are leading right now. Rebound for Villanueva. Ten point game. Nice job by Villanueva after setting the screen to get to the front of that rim for that shot. And you got to really execute down the stretch here. Foul by Marcus Williams. When all the hustle things are in place for UConn right now, and Villanueva right there leading, he got away with a push, <laughs> oh, push as huh? well. Yeah, you've got to make room. I mean, we've seen Watkins do it. We've seen a number of guys on both teams do it. This has been an incredibly physical, at times crossing the line, not dirty, just a very, very physical game from the moment it began. I, I can't imagine officiating this game has been a pleasure tonight because it's been a very difficult game to officiate. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, considering it, the, the physical nature of this game, they've done a pretty good job in maintaining control of it but you know you see a lot of the push offs a lot of the hands and a lot of it has to do with the fact that if they're going to get away with it keep doing it Watkins who is supposed to be shooting the free throws has a nosebleed right now so Demetrius Nichols is going to check into the game I don't believe Nichols has played at all certainly hasn't played here in the second half but he is a good free throw shooter but of course he's ice cold just coming off the bench right now Now McCroskey out Roberts here. And number 33, Terrence Roberts is in for first appearance in the game for Nichols as he comes off the bench for Watkins to shoot the free throws. One of two, the lead 11, and now Nichols will go right back out, and Greg Fourth will come in. It's kind of like you're sent up as a pinch hitter. They intentionally walk you and they take you out for a pinch runner. You hardly feel like you did anything in there, but Nichols did come up with one point. Yeah, he's got something on his seat. Yep. Syracuse at one point, led by 21. Going away, though. Everything but the rebound as the ball eluded his grasp. Now Marcus Williams has it. Under three to go. Rudy Gay. And they've got it down to single digits. This baby's not done yet. There's no reason for Syracuse to try to run that fast break in that type of situation. Could have pulled it back out and gotten it started all over again as Josh Pace is right now. Yeah, now McNamara and Pace making the veteran decisions and Warwick as well. The clock is the enemy of the Huskies. Syracuse has not been to the championship game. The title game here with the Big East Championship since 1998. They haven't won the tournament since 92. A turnover. Warwick got knocked down. Now gets tangled up with Gay. Connecticut comes up with the ball. And Anderson buries a three. 
And Akeem Ward, very fortunate that the officials didn't turn around and look at the demonstration that he made. Otherwise, he'd been hit with a tech and he'd been out of this game. Well, let's start it all off with how Warwick wound up down on the floor. Well, again, we talked about the physical page play and Rudy Gay trying to front him. Warwick actually fell by grabbing Gay. And then Anderson back in the ball game. And here, trying to convert a fast break. He didn't need that play. Josh Pace, a senior, should have known better. You got to work the clock. That turned into two points for UConn. Look at the long pass right there. Jerry McNamara just outmanned by the taller athletic Rudy Gay. Then it's a 16 to 3 run for the Connecticut Huskies trying to defend their Big East Tournament Championship. And they've got it down to 6 with 2.12 to go. And the chant of Let's Go Orange has been replaced by Let's Go Huskies here at the Garden in a crowd that's probably pretty much evenly split. Well, I mentioned it before. It was all about execution down the stretch for both teams. Syracuse got a little lax, a little undisciplined, has gotten them in trouble. The five starters back on the floor right now for Jim Beheim, and that means a ton of experience as Gay fouls McNamara. And we don't have to tell you, but we will anyway. And Jim Calhoun is thinking it right now. You don't want to foul Jerry McNamara. And not only that, but, you know, you play pretty good defense. You got him scrambling. It's two minutes left. You know, you're down six, two possession ball game. McNamara, a great free throw shooter. I guess the other thing is Jim Calhoun was thinking was freshman, freshman, freshman. Actually grazed the rim, but he got it to go down. In Jerry McNamara's career, the Orange are one and five against the Huskies. The win coming about a year ago at this time to close out the regular season in a game where Emeka Okafor did not play very much because of a bad back. Williams all the way. Gets the bounce. Trading though isn't good enough right now for Connecticut. They need steals or stops. That's not going to make it any easier for the Huskies as they forgot about the Big East player of the year. Left him alone under the basket when the press didn't work. Williams looking for the foul, doesn't get it. Boone looking for the rebound. Villanueva gets it to go, and it's down to six again. Timeout, Connecticut. Well, and fighting back to get it back to six. They wasted UConn with the fouling and with the Malak's uh, assignment, you know, wasted about 30 seconds. Again, Charlie Villanueva was just hanging around that time. You talk about breaks, but he knows what to do with it once he gets it, and it's important that he was around the basket. Now 14 for Villanueva, the high score for Connecticut. Jim Calhoun in Connecticut are looking for their seventh Big East championship. Should they be able to win tonight and again tomorrow night? That would be the most ever. Georgetown's got six. For Jim Beheim, as great as they've been, Syracuse over the last 13 years, they haven't won the Big East championship since 92. What would it mean for these players to beat UConn, their nemesis, in this kind of a setting? Well, it would be icing on the cake, the cherry on top for Akeem Warwick, no question about it. Senior going out, he's had a number of tremendous accomplishments. And he probably had the list of things he wanted to get done before he left. And I'm sure this is way at the top. Beating UConn. Connecticut, the defending national champions and also the defending Big East tournament champions. And now Jim Calhoun's way out on the floor arguing a call. As Jim Burr came racing across the floor with a foul on Connecticut. It's going to go. On Kellogg. And McNamara is going to the line. Not exactly what Jim Calhoun was looking for. Now he's looking for at least an opportunity for a steal. That put in a, almost as automatic a two as you can have on the free throw line. 87% of the season from the strike. Boone in, Armstrong out. A 21 point lead is down to six.
And now John Cal over the scores table. Perhaps trying to make sure that it's McNamara who should be shooting the free throws. Jim Beheim says that's okay. Doug. I'm happy with him. And now John Cal's happy with it. Whatever was the problem, they sorted it out. West Virginia waiting for the winner. One and one for McNamara. They all count, huh? <laughs> Doesn't matter how much rim they touch, as long as they go down. Uh, normally, you don't think of Jim Beheim being cool, but he was cool on that one. The lead back to eight. Anderson for three. Villanueva clubbed, and he'll go to the line. Connecticut scored only 19 points in the first half tonight, their lowest scoring half of the season. They've averaged 79 points per game this season. They're 26 below that right now. But again, tremendous job on the boards in the first half by Syracuse. UConn thrives on offensive rebounds and second chance points, and Syracuse limiting them. And the other side of it is, again, no one really took it upon themselves as Marcus Williams and Rudy Gay to a certain extent took it upon themselves to attack the zone until here in the second half. Len UConn is just six for 14 from the line tonight. That hurts too. Williams will draw the foul. It's going to be McNamara and it's going to be two shots. And I don't know if McNamara is arguing about the foul or arguing whether it should be a shooting foul but he's arguing. Well, these coaches are really getting after it. Jim Calhoun and Jim Beheim, they've been getting after it as much as the players have been tonight. They've been rivals here in the Big East going on almost 20 years now. This is the 19th year for Jim Calhoun at Connecticut and, of course, Jim Beheim in his 29th year as the head coach of Syracuse. Each of them with more than 700 wins. Going away, those fouled again. Looking ahead to tomorrow night's championship game. The winner of this game will take on the West Virginia Mountaineers. Led by the likes of Mike Ganzi and Kevin Pitznagel. They won their third game in as many days here today, knocking off Villanova by two on a couple of Ganzi free throws with two tenths of a second left on the clock. And free throws are killing the Husky comeback. Well, at the end of the day, they've had their opportunities. You know, they can sit and they can talk about, everyone can talk about the officiating, which I don't think has been a factor in this game. But the opportunities have been there for UConn, and they haven't been able to capitalize. Seven for 18 as a team. Villanueva, two for eight. McCroskey is fouled, and now the Orange and their fans can sense it. Syracuse is not a great free throw shooting team other than McNamara but all they've got to do Lynn, is knock down a reasonable number of them in the next minute and five and they're going to the final. And now it's let's go orange echoing around this building as Hakeem Warwick is our Reebok player of the game. And he did it being saddled with four fouls, three and four fouls throughout much of this ball game. McCroskey a miss. Williams looking to penetrate on every possession. Boone the rebound. And it will be Connecticut basketball. Another opportunity right around the rim missed by Boone. who would love to have a few of these back tonight, but Syracuse has contested every shot to an incredible degree. That's right, even from behind. Boone just four for 13, and he leads the Big East in field goal percentage this year. Gay falls down. Loose ball to McNamara, and a timeout was called by Jim Beheim. Well, let's look back at the last time the Syracuse Orange, then the Orange Men, won the Big East Championship. It was all the way back in 1992. Ten seconds left. David Johnson hits the J to put the Orange Men up by two. And when Georgetown's Robert Churchwell couldn't hit the desperation three, Syracuse had won the Big East Championship. One of three, won by Jim Beheim and one by the Orange in the 26-year history of this event 
and this conference. They've been close a number of times. They've actually been to the, the final 11 times overall, going 3 and 8 in that stretch. Have not been to the final, though, since 1998. West Virginia is waiting for them. They've never been to the final until now. More than just seeding for the NCAA tournament on the line here tonight. A great, great rivalry between two teams who play twice every year and two coaches who have coached against one another at least twice every year for 19 seasons and have a tremendous amount of respect. It will stay with Syracuse. Two of the very few teams that really define the Big East. And that's what this is about. This is about tradition. Yeah, both of them are going to the NCAA tournament, but the tradition means an awful lot. Now Warwick is fouled. Warwick going to the line. Let's get more on the Big East Player of the Year. Back to Mark Jones. Yeah, guys, it's not exactly a Joe Namath type promise, but Warwick has told assistant coach Rob Murphy that he would shave his head bald if they didn't win the Big East tournament. And he says, and I quote, if we don't win, I'll rock a bald head for the rest of the NCAA tournament. And I've never been bald before. Uh, <laughs> guys, he's already more than halfway there, though. <laughs> I was going to say, he doesn't have much to go. I mean, what are you going to do? Just show a little skin? I have no comment. Neither did Jim Behan. Warwick trying to make sure it doesn't happen if Syracuse can win the Big East championship. I guess in about a year or so, I won't have anything to say. Ah, uh, you're all right. <laughs> Warwick, by the way, tonight reached another milestone. Went over the 1,000 rebound mark in his career. Went over the 2,000 point mark last night. Rudy Gay drills a three. McNamara is going to try to hang on to the ball you don't until somebody fouls him. You don't want to foul him back there. You want to tie him up, make him give it up. I don't think Villanueva was trying to, judging by the look he's giving John Cal. He was trying to crowd him, but not foul him. And, and Jim Calhoun was telling Charlie the same thing. Make him pass it. Anybody but McNamara. None of the other guys on the floor are great free throw shooters. This guy's one of the best in the country. You know, when you're in that situation with this type of free throw shooter handling the ball in a need situation, when you're trying to get the ball back, you got to surround them a little bit. You got a 10 second clock working. Missed the first. Can't anticipate that, but <laughs> I think the Huskies will take it. Seven point lead, 35 seconds to go. Loose ball, Williams has it back. Shot clock now turned off. Tip will go for Villanueva, five point game. And Jim Calhoun is going to use another timeout. Last one, last timeout taken by Connecticut. The big story for Syracuse tonight, their incredible ability and energy to get after it on the offensive glass. Well, that's a defining moment. A lot of it had to do with penetration and the ability to take the help side of UConn, force them to go and help on penetration and get in. A little bit of luck helps as well as Craig Fork just gets a hand on the ball. But any time that Syracuse is able to penetrate or get the ball deep and the help side comes, the rebounders on the other side, on the weak side, we're ready to get it. And 27 offensive rebounds, you know, that's pretty terrific for Syracuse. 25 for Connecticut. They've made up a lot of difference. I was going to say, I'm not sure I've ever seen a game where there have been 52 offensive rebounds, but that speaks to uh, the incredible energy and intensity and physical play we've seen all night long. It hasn't often been pretty here tonight, but. It has been worth watching to give in the effort. West Virginia, the Mountaineers, who now have 21 wins on the season after beating Villanova earlier tonight, will take on the winner of this game, looking more and more like the Orange in the Big East Championship game tomorrow night. The Big East Championship presented by Aero Postal. During the regular season, they met once, and Syracuse defeated West Virginia 72 to 64 on January the 22nd at the Carrier Dome. Hakeem Warwick with a typically big game 22 points and 13 rebounds Connecticut also defeated West Virginia in their only meeting by 10 at Gamble Pavilion West Virginia is trying to become the lowest seed ever to win the Big East Championship and the first team ever 
to not get a buy and win to play four days in a row and win the Big East Championship as Josh Pace has to use a timeout and now Syracuse with one more remaining. Well right now Connecticut is going to contest everything and then foul immediately. How can Syracuse deal with what Connecticut's throwing at them right now. Well they just got to get the ball in bounds and take the fouls and make the free throws but that was a pretty good stand made by Connecticut just then. They double team McNamara kept him from receiving the ball and that's the only place Pace wanted to go with it. Hence he didn't have a second option and had to call a timeout. When you look at the other guys Warwick 68 percent free throw shooter Pace 58 percent Roberts 56 percent. That's obviously Connecticut strategy anybody but McNamara. Right they're double teaming guys they're going to leave people open and dare you to throw it to them yeah. so they can get to them and foul. But the bottom line is I think UConn has learned something today with regard to sticking with the program the system. There was a time when they jumped out of their normal system get the ball inside you know started launching threes and that put them in a deep hole as Syracuse came back. Antonio Kellogg commits the foul on Louis McCroskey. He was not a good free throw shooter no time came off the clock and McCroskey. Is it 49% on the season and 0 for 1 tonight? So Connecticut accomplished what they wanted to on this trip so far, pending how McCroskey does. Syracuse as a team, the worst free throw shooting team in the Big East, and that's with McNamara on the team. So you can imagine how everybody else does. Big one for McCroskey. Kellogg out, Rashad Anderson will come in, give him another outside shooter. And here's the huge one right now with 22.6 seconds. You know, a shot and a steal and another shot, two possessions. The best UConn can expect to do is tie. I don't think you can squeeze three possessions into 22.6 seconds. Yeah, Not if Syracuse plays it smart. For some reason, Jim Burr is talking to Jim Calhoun about that last substitution. And I don't think he's going to allow Anderson to come in for Keller. Well I think it's because and maybe because Anderson was on the floor came out no time elapsed on the clock right. I think Jim Burke called that foul before possession was had. So Kellogg has to stay and Jim Calhoun can't get a better shooter in there. And when you go offense to defense you got to be cognizant of that. 